The summer is done and racing is about to begin again here in Hong Kong for the 2019-2020 season. I'm Brett Davis. Welcome to our first edition for the new season of Racing to Win. I'm alongside of Paul Lally and, of course, Tom Wood. So it's uh, two quality legs of lamb alongside <laughs> us from Australian beef. That's what someone mentioned to me in the... Uh, in the uh, city the other day as I was wandering through, and I thought it was a fair assessment, uh, with the exception of the word quality amongst that. <laughs> uh, let's start with Tom firstly. Tom, some exciting times coming up for Hong Kong Racing. Two new jockeys and, of course, Douglas White, a former jockey, uh, commences his training career. He certainly does, Brett, and he's got a, a number of chances uh, coming up on the program on Sunday. Uh, 22 or 23 years since he kicked off his riding uh, career here in Hong Kong. He's starting with his uh, training career. He's got a number of nice chances through the course of the afternoon. Lyle Hewitson, a, mm. a two-time champion jockey in his own right in South Africa. He's going to add some exciting flavour here with Melbourne Cup winning jockey Blake Shin. Yes, yeah, very exciting times, Paul. And of course, for the punters, there's plenty of free money on offer. The club throwing in a massive amount of money for the TT, particularly for the first day. Yeah, definitely. Definitely 13 and a half million. We're expecting it to get up to 20, 1.9 in the six up as well. And of course, we've got the uh, what we did was very popular last year when they seeded the the quartets and mm. the first fours, uh, three races there, six, eight, and ten. We're seeding those pools as well. So it's good, and it's going to make a lot of interest now. With all these new kids on the block, you know, they all would like to impress. You remember your first day at school, Brett? We used to wear your shorts and long socks, and you, you're there. You want to impress. You want to do well. And I think they've all got good chances. Yeah, I was actually a jeans man with ankle <laughs> freezers, Paul, but uh, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, and let's uh, get through the nitty-gritty uh, with regards to Beauty Generation's return. We expect him to return in about a month. Paul, what have you seen from the big boy at the track? And I understand big is probably the operative word. Yeah, he's had a good off-season, there's no question there. Mm. He's still a, well a month away. He's mm. got a bit of excess, which we all know about, <laughs> uh, as, uh, as he has there. But, look, he's, he's good. And the exciting thing is... They have been talking about uh, travelling abroad with him as well this season, so that's a possibility. So another string to his bow there. But uh, he, we won't see him for another month yet. He's not put in some serious work yet, yep. but we look forward to seeing him back. And what a great season last season. Absolutely. Unbeaten from eight. Celebration Cup in early October expected to be the kickoff point for Beauty Generation. Tom, you've done the majority of the trials heading through the first uh, three or four weeks leading into the new season. Is there a stable or two stable that strike you that they might be ready early? Danny Shum's had a lot of trial winners. Uh, he steps out to winning method Regency Legend on the the program, but he's had some good trial winners through the the course of the first two or three weeks here. So mm. I think he can be one to watch out for on the usual stables. Casper uh, fans can get them up and running, and so too can John Size. John Size normally, normally with that uh, slow and steady approach. Yeah, only two runners for our champion trainer uh, there on the opening day. Let's have a look at the situation for the first meeting of the new season and away we go. Sha Tin, 10 races, B course on offer for the 1st of September, Sunday afternoon in Hong Kong. The Mount Butler Handicap, Class 5, 1600 to kick off proceedings. Uh, Gold Velvet, Le Panache, Douglas White's first runner as a trainer. Ironically, he won on this horse in race two last season. The only jockey to actually have won on him. He's under the care of Douglas White. A good runners way will be in the market. Regency Gem's been trialling well. We go down to the bottom. Romantic Journey uh, was able to save his career last season with a third in his final run. He is on a rating of 20. Uh, let's have a look at the speed information for the first time. Looks slow. Yeah, there's not much speed to be uh, accounted for here. It's almost a, a race of two divisions. You've, you've sort of got your top four and then take your pick about the, the remainder. Wampoa Star maybe could be one that could go forward. We've seen in the past uh, horse like Good Runner's Way settle a little bit further forward than potentially he might he, uh, might have uh, here. You've got Proud Sky and Regency Gem there as well, but not a lot of pace, Paul. Here is Le Panache. Now, Alberto Senna will take the first mount for uh, Douglas White. This will be his first runner as a trainer, and the horse goes nicely. And as you mentioned, he did win off a 119 in race two last season. He goes nicely there. Uh, he's a good runner's way. He finished off the season really well. He'll probably start favourite. I, I expect him to be pretty short. Uh, Zach Pert will be aboard here. Him, and you can see him having a nice stretch out down the back straight. So he's a horse that's uh, going well. And uh, Young Glory, uh, he's put in two uh, good gallops. He was a bit hit and miss last uh, season, but it's interesting they're putting the blinkers back on him. And he draws well in barrier number two, so I expect a better showing from Young Glory. Yep, for the racing club, so they'll be there, uh, no doubt, in full for the first day of the new season. Let's start with Good Runner's Way, who, as Paul mentioned, is likely going to be on the top of a lot of people's selections. He was very close to a win at the end of last season. Zach Purton, champion jockey, takes his first ride for the new season. There's some OK races from him towards the, the back end of the season. This was one of them uh, back on the, the 16th of June. You've got Gold Velvet, Young Glory in this race as uh, well. He um, he boxed on well enough. This was the, the race that was... Uh, um 
in the middle of June. And yeah, I thought it wasn't a bad effort. You can see him coming through there in the, the red cap. Uh, Danny Schum, as I mentioned, his stable, I think, is going well at the beginning of the season. Yeah, look, he's going to be there, isn't he? He's still a maiden from his 11 starts. Uh, but, so look, he, he did show that a win's not far at the end of, back end of last season. All right, we've spoken about the stats regarding Douglas White's first runner, Lerpa Nash. He takes the horse from Chris So, the exchange done in the off-season. And he is a horse who's won over the course and distance, and both his wins have been in this class. Yeah, and look, he, his last win was fresh as well, as you mentioned, at the start, start of last season. Uh, that was off a rating of 33. Carried 119 in that day. That day. He's got to carry 132. Uh, but look, he, he's a horse that goes fresh, and he won most impressively in this particular contest. So if he reproduces that with a, with a big weight, I think he's, he's got a good chance. I've, I've got him in the numbers, but not on top. He's had one trial. He was out the back of that yeah. trial. He ran 10th, so there wasn't, um, wasn't yeah. too much that he gave away on that occasion. He actually ran 10th uh, behind this horse we're about to look at, Regency Jam. Now, he's an interesting runner. I'm not convinced. I know Joe Marrera aboard. The blinkers go back on, and he's up in distance again to the 1,600 metres. But he hasn't done a lot so far, but he has won a couple of trials coming in. Seven starts for nothing. You can see he's just been pushed on there by Joe Marrera Wicker in this trial. He's in the red cap on the outside. He comes up to Never Better, who goes around on the programme, just gets Never Better over the final stages. But just being ridden out didn't overly encourage me. Sealer Panash in the background there too, just going over the yeah. line in last position. Now, Regency Gem, Paul, you were getting excited about this from these trials? Not really. I mean, he, his, his five last five starts have all been at Happy Valley. Mm. Uh, he's by showcasing, and that progeny do go well at Happy Valley. So, look, I'm, I'm happy to watch him go around. One interesting though, thing is the blinkers will go back on him. All right. So does he make it into the four or not? No, he doesn't. He doesn't for me. But, look, I'm going to put Gold Velvet on top. Lyle Hewitson, as I mentioned before, the new kid on the block, uh, I think he can win it. Um, the first race here will be a fairy tale start for him. Uh, Gold Velvet, he is a winner, uh, this horse before, albeit at Happy Valley. He has run well at uh, Shartan. And I think uh, this horse has been going pretty well. And uh, Tony Millard's got him well um, spruiked up for this. Good runner's way, Le Panache, and uh, Young Glory in there for third. But I think one could be a good each way price. On top for me is uh, Good Runners uh, Way. First up uh, here for uh, Zach Purton and uh, Danny Shum from Barry number six. I think he'll be hard to beat. Gold Velvet, uh, Lurpanesh. They were the top three, and then I sort of had to scratch around for a fourth number. Went with Regency Gem over so Young Glory in the end, but uh, it was sort of uh, hard to go past the top four, really. Three, one, two, and four. All right, so that's the first class five of the afternoon.